Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to dive into a more advanced workflow, how to play around with long length video generation using the WAN 2.2 image to video method. I've already got some video footage generated here. It's all done using just one image and a bunch of text prompts to guide the emotions, actions, and motions in the video. We're going to go over how to play around with this, like this cyberpunk city scene with the sports car, for example. It's got that fast motion. I've posted this in YouTube Shorts to show a quick demo yesterday. This was actually the first time I tried combining WAN 2.2 Image 2 video with the long length looping video generation technique that I used with WAN 2.1 Vase. And honestly, this is way easier than dealing with video to video mask editing in WAN 2.1 Vase because this image to video approach is a lot simpler to handle for conditions. So let's check it out. How can we create these long, smooth animations without any hiccups between segments? Usually you'll notice some frame stacking, like a choppy or glitchy feeling in other stitching long video out there. We're going to go over how to avoid that in my setup of workflow. First of all, if you don't already have the Comfy UI WAN 2.2 video model, you can grab it from the official Comfy UI repositories. They've repackaged the WAN 2.2 files the VAE, text encoder, diffusion model, and necessary LoRa's like the LightX2 V LoRa for WAN 2.2. If you're running on a low VRAM computer, you'll want to use the lower requirement GGUF quantized models of WAN 2.2. You can find those on the QuantStack Hugging Face repo where they've got different versions, including the image to video model from Q2 up to Q8. Now, over in Comfy UI, you'll see I've already loaded the workflow and just generated a video before recording this. This one was made using just a single image as the starting frame. I created that image earlier using Flux. Then I resized it to fit WAN 2.2's requirements. But honestly, the resizing part isn't the main point here. What I really want to talk about is the long length video generation. Usually, when other people demo long length videos with WAN 2.2, They'll set up one sampler group with conditions, steps, etc. Then create another group, connect the output to the next, and keep chaining them like a snake, generating frame after frame, then stitching it all together at the end. But in my case, I don't do that. To be honest, that kind of setup feels like bulky workflow, or many spaghetti with meatball chain up together. As I show in the previous video about WAN 2.1 Vase, a series of workflows using looping mechanism and spaghetti chain up meatball, it makes like a hard coding workflow from a system design point of view. For looping mechanism, you can just apply a loop and control how many times you generate based on the video length you need. Plus, you can use string lists to apply multiple prompts, and those prompts will follow the index based on how many times the loop runs. So, going back to the start of the workflow, first step is setting up the video settings. Pretty straightforward, at least for me, but I know some of you might not be clear on how to configure this for video generation. You do need to do a little math here. Basically, total frames length. This is how many frames you'll need for your full video. For example, in this Cyberpunk City sports car video, I'm going for 28 seconds. So that means I set the total frames to 726. That number divided by the FPS gives you the actual duration. I'm using 25 frames per second here. So quick math. 726 divided by 25 is 29 seconds. That's roughly the length I'm aiming for. Now the length per sampler is set to 121 or sometimes 129. That's how many frames each sampler will generate. This is standard for simple image to video or text to video setups using the K sampler. Before that, you set your image to video conditions like width, height, and the number of frames per segment. I call this the sampler length and it connects directly to the WAN image to video native node. Quick note, I'm using the native node here, not the wrapper. Why? Because the looping mechanism works way better with the native node. It's just more flexible. Moving down to the bottom of this first group, you don't really need to tweak much here unless you want to change the FPS. Some people think WAN 2.2 only runs at 16 frames per second. That's fine if you want to use that but you still need to match it with your total frame count. For example, if you've got 726 frames and you set FPS to 16, that'll give you a longer video, around 45 seconds. 
but the motion will look slower and a bit choppier because there are fewer frames per second to capture smooth movement. Honestly, I don't care about sticking to the default model settings. I just bump it up to 25 frames per second and sometimes even higher. If I need 60 FPS output, then I go for 30 FPS in the setting. By the way, I'll show you later how to double the FPS in the final result. Next, set your width and height. Again, this depends on your hardware. If you've got low VRAM or a slower PC, you can't just generate long videos at high res. In the average, with a up-to-date consumer PC, generate 480p resolution is doable. Higher hardware config, generate 720p high resolution have not problem, so it depends, and be realistic to yourself for the setting. Because long videos eat up both VRAM and RAM. As you stack up 20, 30, or 40 seconds of footage, your memory usage goes way up. So it's not only about the GPU, other hardware in general also required for longer length, like up to 45 seconds, or even one minute. So your resolution settings really depend on what your system can handle before you hit that OOM, out of memory, error in comfy UI. Now, the prompt. In the first positive prompt box, I put the initial text prompt. This controls what happens in the first segment of the video. The rest of the video will extend from that initial result. For example, here I've got Demon King sitting in his kingdom, then standing up. That's what this first prompt does. For the negative prompt, I just use a standard template. Doesn't matter too much. Moving up, this next section is where you set your first image frame. I use Load Image from Path. That's my go-to. If you prefer uploading directly in Comfy UI, you can swap this node out. But I don't like that method because it duplicates images in your input folder. And if you generate thousands of images and videos, that's a lot of unnecessary file bloat. Anyway, once you've got your first frame, you resize it and send it to the one image to video node. This native node handles all the conditioning. You pass in the positive and negative prompts, the VAE, your image settings, and the sampler length, which determines how many frames each sampler generates. In WAN 2.2, we're not just using one sampler, we're using multiple. Specifically, I've set up high and low noise samplers. I've tweaked the setup a bit using a three sampler method. As we have discussed this method in chat group, and some suggested this advanced three sampler method for better prompt adherence and dynamic motion, so I'm testing it out here in this long length image to video workflow. Let's break it down. First, the high noise model. Second, the high noise model with the light X2 V LoRa attached. Third, the low noise model, which adds detail and refines the raw noise into clean, high quality frames. For the WAN model settings, I've split this into two separate groups instead of using one model loading group like in WAN 2.1. I'm using FP16 for the WAN 2.2 image to video high noise model. If your GPU can't handle FP16 due to low VRAM, try FP8 or even the GGUF quantized models we mentioned earlier. I don't have the GGUF image to video WAN 2.2 model downloaded, so I'm running with Safe Tensor. As you can see, I only have the text to video GGUF model downloaded. Also, the Torch compile model requires the C library from Visual Studio, so make sure you've got that installed. And for Sage Attention, I've posted a tutorial example in the Patreon group showing how to set it up. It's actually pretty simple. You just need the right versions of Triton, CUDA, PyTorch, and Python that match your comfy UI setup. Once that's configured, you can use pip install to get Sage Attention running. Now, moving to the next group, this is the color reference, super useful for long videos. After the first five second segment generates what I call sampler part one, I capture the last frame of that clip. That becomes my color reference image. I'll use this later during video extension to maintain consistent color tones. Now about video extension, this is the trigger point. I've got a fan switch bypass here, which acts like a button. If you only want a short video, say one five second clip, you can disable the loop, but most of the time you'll want long videos. So I keep it enabled. That activates the looping mechanism for video extension. If you're not super familiar with programming or logic, don't worry. The loop begin and loop end nodes are just how the system runs the full generation. 
One thing I changed from earlier versions, instead of using round in the math expressions, I now use seal. Why? Because rounding can cause you to miss the last few frames. For example, if your calculation gives 4.5 loops, rounding down to 4 cuts off part of your video. But seal rounds up to 5, so you get that extra segment. The number of extend loops here just shows the total needed. For reference, the current loop shows which iteration you're on. Say you're doing 5 loops, it'll show 0 to 4. The fifth loop passes the result to the end and outputs the final video, so it runs smoothly without extra logic. The best part? This image to video method is way easier than video to video or the old WAN 2.1 vase workflows. With those, you had to manage mask frames and control net frames manually. Here, you just loop the image generation. Same three sampler setup, nothing crazy, but here's a tweak. Instead of using one prompt for the entire 28 second video, I use travel prompts. These are defined in a text box, and each new line becomes a separate prompt for each loop. So, the first line is for the first extension, the second line for the next, and so on. Just press enter to add a new prompt. The string list splits on new lines, so each paragraph becomes a new prompt for that loop. The number of prompts must match the number of loops. For example, if I'm doing five loops, I need five prompts, each on a new line. That way, each video extension uses the right prompt synced with the timeline. Back to color match. This is key. The AI can sometimes shift colors between segments, and the light X to V LoRa might introduce slight degradations. So, by using the first reference image as a color match throughout, I keep the tone consistent across the entire 28 to 30 second video. One big advantage of the looping method? It's dynamic. You're not hard coding four fixed groups for 20 seconds like some people do. That's rigid and not scalable. With loops, you can generate any length, perfect for commercial or enterprise use. Same concept as my old WAN 2.1 vase long length workflow, just updated for WAN 2.2. One difference, no overlap frames. In WAN 2.1, we used start-to-end frame nodes with overlapping images to smooth transitions. But in image to video, the native node doesn't support that. So instead, I just use the last frame of each segment as the start for the next, then remove the duplicate and stitch it all together. It still looks smooth. I've tested this multiple times, no choppiness between five second segments. Take the sports car example. No hiccups at the 5, 10, or 15 second marks. The car drifts smoothly into the corner. The drone pops up, switches to first person view, flies, lands, and enters the tunnel. All seamless. No jarring transitions. Some people using WAN 2.2 still get choppy results but if you handle the frames right and stitch them cleanly, it won't happen. Finally, frame interpolation. This is where I double the FPS. My base is 25 FPS, so interpolation brings it to 50. Sometimes I set the base to 30 FPS, then interpolate to 60. That gives you ultra smooth motion. You can see the difference. On the left, 25 frames per second. On the right, 50 frames per second. The Demon King's walk, the camera movement, everything, it's way smoother. So yeah, that's how I did it. Last night after dinner, just experimenting. Took the for loop concept, applied it to WAN 2.2, and made some fun animations. Like this one. Starts slow, a young lady looks confused, then boom, explosion behind her, camera zooms in. Fast and slow motions in one clip. WAN 2.2 handles it well, and the motion quality is way better than WAN 2.1. Try it out. If you've got your own method, go for it. Doesn't matter. Feel free to experiment and find your own way to extend videos longer. That's the future of AI video generation. Oh, and one last thing. Performance. Using this three sampler setup, it's way faster. For a five second clip, first two steps took about 35 seconds, Next four steps took 37 seconds, both on high noise models. Then the low noise model, six steps total, still under a minute, really solid. All right, that's it for this video. Just a breakdown of how this workflow runs. There's a lot of detail, so you'll need to test it yourself. If you don't like my settings or method, 
go ahead and tweak it. But if you want to reinvent the wheel, be my guest. 